This video is not for kids. This video may contain suggestive themes, graphic images, and triggering topics. Anything said within this video is for strict research purposes only. This channel nor this video condones any harassment or illegal activities from any reaction you may have from this content. Previously, or Michael tried to warn us. So, I own half of Sony's publishing, in, and I'm leaving them, and they they're very angry at me because of the. We discussed the many ways Michael tried to personally warn us through things he said publicly in the first three parts, which excluded the music. Although episode four is a standalone episode, please feel free to take a look back at the original first three episodes of this series. Warnings come in many forms. Michael sometimes would blatantly tell us through his interviews. Michael, if this little boy says, Daddy, I want to go on the stage. <laughs> After what you've been through? <laughs> hey, hold on now. <laughs> hold on. If you do go that way, expect this, expect that, expect this, expect that. <laughs> You'd lay it all out. I'd lay it all out. You're going to get all this and all this and all this. Are you ready to do that? Say, yeah, I can't wait. Go and do it better than I did. But know what you're in for. Know what you're in for. But his greatest reach and what would be the pinnacle skill of Michael Jackson is his songwriting ability. A majority of his songs that were released were listened to and loved worldwide, but it is the actual message behind the lyrics heard by the listener. This video will take us on a journey of Michael's warnings through some of his songs. Starting with Can You Feel It? written by Michael and his brother Jackie, and sung together with the Jackson brothers. I know I will be asked, what does this have to do with the death hoax? But let me explain the connection before I delve into the meaning of the lyrics. Can You Feel It was released as a single on March 5th, 1981. The date of March 5th has ties to another key date of the death hoax, which is also the date of the This Is It announcement. This Is It was to be Michael's last concert series, just like the Triumph album, in which the song Can You Feel It originally was set to be Michael's last album with his brothers. <laughs> Both the Triumph album and This Is It series would have marked the end of Michael's performances alongside his brothers in 1981, as well as in 2009 as a solo artist. Yeah, I know there was one more album to follow Triumph called Victory, but let's stay on track. In 2009, Michael had reached his own personal triumph where he was able to eventually walk away from what he dedicated his life to for 45 years since the age of five with no real breaks for normalcy or individuality. Michael also reached his triumph with his stint as lead singer of the Jacksons once he reached his pop star peak the following year in 1982. 
the lyrics of Can You Feel It was one of the songs that spoke about our need as inhabitants of this planet, needing to learn to embrace each other. This video depicts all of our differences as we do come in different shades and the different shades around that time in the early 80s were still living segregated, even though those laws were canceled and changed. Michael took this as a warning as to one of the things our planet was missing and togetherness on this planet was definitely missing. He noticed this especially growing up around the time in the 60s and 70s where segregation and racism was running rampant here in the US and globally. Telling us to unite through the song, Can You Feel It? wasn't just a lyric. It was a warning and us being divided instead of united would be one of the reasons our planet could and would be destroyed. Ain't the pictures enough? Why do you go through so much to get the stories you need so you can bury me? In an attempt to further expose another trouble in his life that could cause a potential disaster, Michael would pen the lyrics to a song called Privacy, recorded in August 1998 and released in 2001 on the Invincible album. The children were under enormous pressure with people all around. Yeah. But I know it's sad, but they were the first day of birth. We had covered them. There was like helicopters flying around the hospital with satellites two blocks down the street. But wouldn't it be easier for the bodyguards and for your nanny just to take the children to the zoo on their own rather than have to go through what they went through today? No, because I can't take that chance. Um, They'd rather be my fault if something happens. This song was a public call to justice for the blatant invasions of privacy that Michael faced all the time. Just listen to these lyrics. My pen was dead and confused like many others I knew. But on that cold winter night, my pride was snatched away. And those lyrics he blatantly called the paparazzi out for chasing down Princess Diana and causing the fateful limousine crash that claimed the princess's life. Way before the princess died in that crash, she and Michael were good friends. Michael took her death as a warning and spoke out even more about the disrespectful and the dangerous ways the paparazzi will chase you down and cause your death just to get that snapshot that they would sell to the media. I woke up. And uh, <clears throat> my doctor gave me the news. And I fell back down in grief. And I started to cry. And so I, the pain, I, I felt inner pain. It was pain in my stomach and in my chest. So I said, I, I can't, I cannot handle this. It's too much. Just the message and the fact that I knew it personally. Then on top of that one, I said, there's another one. Real soon, I feel it coming. There's another one. It's another one coming, and I pray it's not me. Please don't let it be me. The Mother Teresa came. This was one fate that Michael refused to have for himself or for his children after becoming a parent. Some of the stories that Michael had shared were horrific about the paparazzi jumping from airplanes, parachuting down to his property just to get a glimpse of him and his kids. Just like many of us, Michael had the sneaking suspicion that the death of Princess Diana was no accident, and that's what led to Michael saying, I said, there's another one. Real soon, I feel it coming. There's another one. It's another one coming, and I pray it's not me. Please don't let it be me. Which leads to another song that brings us to a live performance that ended an incident. But before I get into that, let me start off by saying that Earth Song is an ode to the planet and a cry out to its inhabitants. It asked bunches of questions that needed answering, and the short film was the icing on the cake when it came to giving a warning. The short film depicts and hops in between a pre and post apocalyptic Earth and gave a play by play of all the things ripping apart our planet. It opens up with a beautiful opening shot of the Amazon forest, birds and monkeys sitting peacefully in the trees. As the camera pans, 
Smoke begins to fill the forest, and a bulldozer comes plowing through the trees seconds after. Appearing on an empty burning earth, Michael walks through the burning fields and tattered clothing, but the imagery gets even darker as the seconds roll by. On screen, appears a dead elephant poached for its tusks, lying there in front of the tribe that looked at all animals as sacred beings, while another set of tribal members had no choice but to stand by and watch their forest trails be destroyed by invaders. Michael was sending another warning, not just through the lyrics of the song, but through the imagery as well. This song and imagery is a wake up call and points out currently what we are experiencing. And since the release of the song, our planet's gotten worse. Look at some of these instances. Sections of the Amazon rainforest are on fire. The impacts of climate change are increasing and inevitable. A different kind of weather event is threatening our future. As global temperatures continue to rise, experts say there's growing evidence that humans will face catastrophic heat waves and that parts of our planet will become uninhabitable unless we make dr drastic changes. In the world today, and you tell me if Michael's warnings through his music should have not been taken seriously a lot sooner. None of what was penned into Earth's song or what was put into the short film before it was made up. It was a warning. Like Michael tried to warn us, someone tried to warn him as well. This was during the time he was still under Sony and was having issues with them. This is also around that same time that Michael would do several interviews saying they were after him, meaning the Illuminati. During that 1997 performance of Earth Song in Munich, the floating platform Michael was dancing on above the stage was to be lowered slowly to the floor, but instead someone rigged the platform for it to fall fast enough at a speed to put fear in Michael, but even after that happened, Michael kept his performance going despite the immense pressure he felt to his back and legs during the small crash. Some of this imagery includes poverty, littering, extreme weather, animal poaching, wars, and the desecration of our forest trails, which is also our main source of oxygen. Also, air pollution through gases and smoke. By the end of the short film, the earth begins to clean itself up and wipes us inhabitants from the face of the planet just so Mother Nature can eventually correct the damages that we've done to our world. Michael tried to warn us, but did any of us actually listen? Thanks everyone for tuning into this video. Much love to you all. More is coming from my channel very soon, trust me. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe, and also hit that notification bell so you get notifications on all upcoming video releases. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you next time.